Hi everyone and uh, welcome to our discussion today on this topic, uh, share based payments. Uh, one of the most uh, relevant accounting standards nowadays uh, with respect to a lot of companies, you know, where we look at uh, these companies have started uh, rewarding the employees, uh, you know, in form of stock options, share appreciation rights and, and things of that sort, right? Our objective in this particular discussion is to, is to understand uh, how do we look at the vesting conditions, right? And that is that is one key focus of this accounting standards to uh, you know, look at it. How should different kind of vesting conditions be treated with respect to the accounting part of it, right? So when I look at the vesting conditions, I would predominantly divide it into two categories. One is service based. Conditions and second is performance based conditions. The performance based conditions is also, of course, non service based conditions. Right now, the very thought process behind service based conditions is that I'm telling my employees stay with the company. For a particular period, which is the vesting period, and then you are eligible to get something. Right? So here the condition simply says the conditions would require an employee to serve the entity. Right? So the moment I say requires to serve the entity, I'm safely looking at my matching concept when I say there is today the date of grant of option, right? And let's say there is a vesting fee. Right? And after this vesting period is over, for example, for example, we say that the ESOPs, the employee stock option plan, is offered to, or let's say this is now available to the employees who served this listing period, right? So the very idea of service based conditions is that you serve the duration and you are eligible for some rewards, right? So straight away, where we correlate the matching concept, the company receives benefits of your service and the cost of ESOP is recognized over the vesting period. Are we good so far? So a very very basic accounting concept of matching we have started recognizing. So one accounting entry I might I want to talk about debit employee cost, staff expenses, whatever you want to write, credit, equity. Right, because you are going to issue shares, and when you do so, that's where the you know uh, share capital will increase and things of that sort. Right. So what I'm saying is about service-based conditions is that predominantly my accounting depends on my estimate of number of employees staying with the organization. My estimate of number of employees staying with the entity will define my accounting. Any change in the estimate, any change in estimate 
is required to be applied on a prospective basis. Right? So, what we are saying is, I have my share based payments and I started looking at the conditions upon which these share based payments will be made. Within that, it said there could be service based conditions or non service based conditions which are also referred to as performance based conditions. After this we will talk about the performance based conditions as well. But then the service based conditions require an employee to serve the entity for a specific vesting period as per the contract. Right? So the company will receive the benefits and certainly the cost of that ESOP has to be charged over the vesting period. Good so far? Right? And since the number of people would keep on changing, they are likely to change. People may come, may go, whatever number of people I expect that they would stay after a point in time, I would make the prospective changes because this is in the estimate. Right? So that is one part of service based conditions. The other part within the service based conditions would help us also identify the accounting for the performance based conditions. For example, we are saying that I want to charge the cost of this ESOP over the vesting period. The cost of the employee stock option plan over the period of vesting. Now what is the cost of this ESOP? How do we determine this? Is, is a big question, is, is a question which requires a lot of deliberation, right? We are saying that, so let me just use space to probably explain the next context. What is my cost of ESOP? We say that after the vesting period rules, this is probably today. This is my vesting period, 2 years, 3 years, 5 years, 10 years, does not matter. And this is the end of that vesting period. Right? So when I look at my end of vesting period, it's a good idea probably at this point in time to talk of some real life example. Right? Let's say we have Mark Zuckerberg, of course the CEO of Facebook, right? He is told that today, I mean, I'm talking about the date when the company did not go listed, they were about to expand exponentially, which we have already seen that they did, right? So, long time back, when this company was supposed to go listed, you know, issue his shares in public and things like that. So Mark Zuckerberg was told, of course, one of the most valued employees in the organization, the key employee. He was told that, just key employee, not employees, he was told that stay with the company for 10 years. Right? Stay in the company for 10 years and you will be given X number of shares that will be available to you without any charge, fee, cost, price, whatever you want to talk about. Right? So let's say this X number of shares is uh, 10 million shares. Right? So what the investors tell him, what the investors suggest to Mark Zuckerberg, look, you are the person who is, you know, the, the right person to drive this business. You are the person who can make us all rich. That is, that is one way of looking at it. Right. So investors would say, if you stay with the company, the company will grow, you have a lot of you know, brain and you know basically how to really address uh, 
you know the the growth aspects bringing the you know the the listing of the shares uh, expand the business and things like that so we want you to stay with the company right of course if you stay with the company you expect some remuneration around that but we have just started off so if i'm if i'm if i'm the investor i'm probably telling mark zuckerberg look stay with me i don't have a lot of cash to offer to you right away i'll give you some but i will rather prefer to give you a significant number of shares provided you stay for a specific period and if i am that so that is where this 10 years becomes my vesting period what's up what now let us say he is told that we have you know x plan y plan ab plan b plan c plan or so ever but what we expect today we are not listed in a few years time we will be listed and beyond that point in time we'll have a significant value of the business nobody is going to compete with us in the you know social networking and we're going to really do a lot you know in terms of creating the value of the business so so you also become a partner rather than only become an employee right so what is what is he been told today we are unlisted in few years in few months time we will go listed we will have a lot of money coming from people and after the listing is done we will be able to create a bigger value we will be able to expand exponentially honestly speaking they did they have done that so far right and for a period of 10 years since you are with the business so that is where the listing period comes into the picture after 10 years of time you will be eligible to get 10 million shares right and let us say based upon the valuation methods black shows other method whatever whatever you think is the is the right method for you we are saying that probably each share is going to be worth let's say you know 200 dollars when after the years of time so in a way mark zuckerberg is told that at the end of the 10th year he will be having a wealth of 2 billion dollars what's up right so this 2 billion dollars becomes mark zuckerberg's wealth but at the end of the 10th year so in a way considering all the possibilities right we are talking about the you know uh, the uh, expiry date the interest rates volatility of market a lot of xyz factors we say that a lot of possibilities lot of assumptions being made to arrive at this value of 200 dollars which means that after 10 years if the company pays or issues these 10 million shares which are likely to be 200 dollars worth each which makes of course this value as 2 billion dollars effectively the present value of the option is still worth something right so if i say if i give us in a layman's term stay with me after 10 years i'll give you 2 billion dollars for me as a company this could be probably i'm just using a number here for the sake of it this could be worth maybe dollar 1.2 billion right so this 1.2 billion which is nothing else but the present value of the likely amount the company is supposed to pay after 10 years of time becomes the cost to company for which the benefits of mark zuckerberg serving 
the company is going to be available for 10 years now. Right? So what we are saying is, we are saying that if Mark Zuckerberg, I was changing my pen here, if Mark Zuckerberg stays with the company for 10 years time, he will get $2 billion, right? But is this cost coming to the company, let's say, after 10 years of time? Not exactly, because of the fact that the service of Mark Zuckerberg is offering benefits to the company from this point in time until the end of the 10th year. Which means that even if $2 billion is payable to Mark Zuckerberg after 10 years of time, the matching benefits are lying over this vesting period. Hence, the real cost to the company has to be identified as the present value of that option, which let us say in our case we said it is 1.2 billion. So this 1.2 billion becomes the cost for the vesting period. Are you good so far? So what we are simply saying, we are saying that each year debit employee cost credit equity 1.2 billion divided by 10 which is of course 120 million dollars each year that becomes the cost as charged to the PNL and this this such agreement made Mark Zuckerberg one of the youngest billionaires in the world at that point in time right so what I'm looking at is precisely when I talk about my service based conditions when I look at my service based conditions, I need to identify what is the cost of the service which is determined as the present value of the option to be charged over the vesting period. Good so far? Now, taking this point here, I am looking at another condition. Where I say there is something called as a performance based condition, right? Performance based conditions predominantly I am looking at something called as a market condition, right? A market condition would mean, let us say, that if share prices reach a specific level, right? An employee is told, stay with the company and we will give you the option today that you can probably take shares in the company after a period provided the shares reach a specific level of price. So something like a market cap driven you know uh, incentive right share prices increase the employees are also rewarded for that right likewise it also means by the way as a, as a corollary that if the share prices do not reach the level then the employees will not be given the option sale right so we won't really kind of work on this part that I need to understand first of all what is the market condition where we say that it is something which is beyond the control of the entity. Share prices, company's value, market capitalization and things like that. That is going to be more, you know, uh, market's performance. So that's where it is a performance based condition rather than a service based condition. Now, what we are trying to say is, let us say, Company X offers 
an option to let's say 100 employees right company x offers an option to 100 employees that if they stay with the company for six months, let's say one year, does not really matter, you can take any visiting period you want to, and the share prices increase from let's say dollar ten, which is the current price. Two dollar, let's say you know after one year we're talking about let's say dollar twenty per share, right? So there are five hundred options given to each employee, right? So let's try to understand this. Company X. offers an option to 100 employees that if they stay with the company for one year and the share price increases from $10 to $20, 500 options will be given to the employee that they can be vested after the one year end. Now, let us start to understand this, what kind of conditions are involved. One condition is that there is a staying part of it, that you have to serve the company, which becomes of course a service based condition right the second part is if the share price increases from $10 to $20 per share it is a clear case of market based conditions or market conditions which are not service based but performance based conditions the performance of the company the performance of the market right so let's try to understand how will the accounting work right we are saying the number of employees are 100. So my number of employees are 100. Right? I would want to make an estimate. So let's say when I make it two years, although it does not make a difference because with one year's time also we could have done the job. I would want to estimate the number of employees. expected to stay after the same period, right? Let us say for the sake of it that these will be 80. So today I assume that after two years of time, people would, you know, not all, not everybody would stay with the business, but a few people would leave and I say that it is going to be 80 people in total, right? Now, so that is where I will start looking at my service based conditions and of course the estimates around that, right? So this can change as well. Reality would be, you know, only after the same period is over. Whether there are 100 people, whether 90 people, whether 40 people as the case may be. But this is my initial estimate. Right? So we are done with one part of it. The second part talks about it. I'm saying that mm, here we go. this is currently 10 and should become 20 in two years' time. Right? So the market based conditions or performance based conditions would talk about it that what is the probability? that the price will reach that right so i as a company i as the issuer of those options need to determine the value determine the value of that option so what i'm looking at is if there is a zero percent probability that 
10 will not become 40. Of course, there is not going to be any cost. Right? Because there is no value of the option. Right? If it is going to be, let us say, 18, the maximum 18, so there is no reason why you know, I will be giving these shares back to the employee. So I know that even though my service based conditions might get met, I know that I am not going to reward them. You know, let us say this price, because today itself I know that there is no chance, there is no possibility that it will reach this particular level. But then, let us say for the sake of it, there is some possibility, some probability, right? And my option calculations, uh, option methods, they would all help me identify the value of such an option, right? So let us say that there is some likelihood and on the basis of that, I am able to define value of the option today as let's say dollar six right in in a layman's term i'm saying the value will change from 10 to 20 which means an increase of 10 dollars in two years time realistically i can see that that value has gone to six dollars right so what i'm telling myself if I were to talk about my service based condition that I am giving to those 100 employees or let's say with an estimate of 80, I am giving them something worth 6 today, right? For each of the options and then I go to 500 options. So my total cost with an estimate of 80 people will be 80 into six dollars into 500 options per employee right so what i'm saying is i is i consider that it would stay 80 people in total each one will be given 500 options and the value of the option today is six dollars any change in the option value is disregarded it is not considered because i would only look at the cost today right it is as good as that if i have committed somebody that i'm going to issue them shares tomorrow for the services that i received today it does not matter to me what is the value of the share tomorrow right my cost is already part and that cost is part on the basis of the value of the option today itself. So if tomorrow something changes, I'm not going to bring that into my books at all. Right? That is one part of it. The second one is even more relevant. Let us say that. I do assume that this will happen. That is the reason why the option is a value. Right? But let's say everything goes correct. I have 80 employees. I give them 500 options and let's say there's a six dollar original value of the option this is my two years cost so I need to split it between two parts year one cost and year two cost half each right but let's say now that the market condition is not meant. Actually speaking, the share does not reach from 10 to 20 after 2 years. Let's say it gets stuck at 19.96. What does it mean? Are we going to issue the shares to the employees? The answer is no. We were so close. But can we issue? Of course, we cannot do that. Right? But then, I already part accounted for my cost in my PNL based upon 
the services provided by the employees right that your matching concept is already done so any performance based condition any market conditions even if not met i simply disregard that right so let's put it like this i'm saying today's my value of shares 10 dollars right it goes to 20 or it is expected to go to 20 in 2 years time and that is why my option has a value of dollar 6 right now let us say after 2 years the actual price becomes dollar 200 per share right does that change does the change in the price impact my costing does the change in the price of the share after 2 years of time while originally i was thinking it will go 20 it has gone 200 dollars does it impact my cost the answer is no because i already had assumed i already had calculated my cost of the option as 6 dollars right so even if the price goes to 200 or let's say doesn't go anywhere for that matter where i'm going to issue these shares to the employees i'm simply going to disregard that altogether right the market conditions any changes in the market conditions are completely disregard it right so that is something which is one key area within this accounting standard that i should be able to comprehend well which is if there are vesting conditions any service based conditions changes to be accounted for under or let's say on prospective basis any performance based conditions which are market conditions these are disregarded even if not met in future which means that if i'm telling my employees stay with the company and if the share price is increased to a certain level then only you are eligible for the shares if they stay but the market conditions are not met i would still account for the expenditure And if I'm with that, that is something that we need to really kind of be, you know, get a bit, get, uh, be. Uh, that's what we need to get comfortable with. That even if the market conditions are not met later, I'm not going to award any of the options. I still have already charged that cost to my PNL. Good so far, right? That is something which is one of the key areas within my accounting standard that I should be absolutely comfortable with, right? So that is something that I want to discuss today's session. Thank you very much.